Hi there folks and members of this group, Success Training Academy, people studying their, six, um, their TAE. So I just wanted to do a quick video because people obviously responded to that um, post that I put up about wanting to know um, how to get over nervousness and essentially how to push past any challenges in relation to anxiety, anticipation or just... Um, I guess nerves that may come up prior to doing a presentation and particularly in relation to your Cert 4 and training assessment. And I really, really, really appreciate that question because when I was first starting um, as a trainer, uh, as a public speaker, as a presenter, I was petrified. I literally was petrified. And even um, back in high school, I had to do, you know, speeches in English class, but um, for me, one of my biggest challenges was I was lose all the saliva in my mouth, and so I couldn't get my words out. And that was super frustrating for me. <coughs> Even right now, I'm coughing, right? But for me, um, I went to a number of public speaking courses, and I really wanted to hone my craft, and I wanted to get over my hump, so to speak, and get over my nerves and conquer them, right? So I've certainly walked this journey, and I can really um, speak to the person that is really struggling in this area, but the fact is, though, that every single person... Uh, in some way, shape or form, we'll feel a sense of nervousness before they present. And one of the things I want to share with you right now, and I hope you've got a pad and pen and you're ready to write these things down, is that if you stop feeling nervous, please stop presenting. If you stop feeling nervous, essentially it's a sign to me that you are now complacent. You just don't care anymore, okay? You want to be confident in your message, but you also want to have some sense of anticipation and that really is a sign of respect and honoring your audience, okay? So let's unpack it, all right? Let's go mindset first. So why does it happen? Why does it happen? Well, essentially, there's, there's a number of reasons why nervousness happens, right? But one of them is that neurologically in your body, you've got chemicals that are going to go off because you are going to be in a brand new environment talking about a topic and the scene is going to be brand new for your nervousness, nervous system, right? So you're going to have things coming up for you and different emotions and all of those things are basically just a chemical reaction in your body, okay? Now, for me, that's a sign. Oh, one of my mentors once told me that that is a sign that you are stepping out and your identity is being stretched and expanded, okay? So, he actually, instead of calling it nervousness, he calls it identity expansion. And I really love that term. I really love it, okay? Now, once we've got that in mind, and we kind of know that nervousness is actually a, res a sign of respect for our audience, right? Now let's unpack it, and let's work out how do we bust through it, so to speak, okay? So, in order to bust through it, there's a number of beliefs that if we can establish and also practically implement, then we'll be able to get over this nervousness, so to speak. First thing I want to say is that anything in life gets easier the more you do it, right? So I would be ridiculously nervous about jumping out of an airplane because I've never done it before, right? I don't know what that experience is like. But if I've done that two or three times, maybe five or six times, maybe 10 or 11 times, I'd be okay with that, right? Now, same thing with presenting, same thing with public speaking, same thing with doing deliveries for your TAE, right? So why would you think it's any different, all right? Riding a horse, you know, driving a car, doing anything for the first time, it's going to be a little bit scary and different because you haven't had that experience before. Now, coming back to me, for me getting over my hump, um, I'm gone to a number of public speaking courses, all right? And we covered three core beliefs that really helped me get over my nervousness. Number one, every time I present, my confidence builds. Every time I present, my confidence builds. Every time I present, my confidence builds. As a result of developing that belief, right, I looked for opportunities to actually go and present. Second, there is no such thing as a perfect presentation. There is no such thing as a perfect presentation. There is no such thing as a perfect presentation, only the one that you do, okay? Third one is the more um, 
the more I do, the better I get. The more I do, the better I get, okay? So number one, the more you present, the more confident you get. Number two, no such thing as perfect one. And third, the more you do, the better you get, okay? So if you adopt those beliefs, then you will be hungry to go out and present because you'll be like, huh, here's some positive associations of actually doing the task, all right? Now, the last thing I wanna to touch on is the magic question, right? The magic question. The magic question is a question that I use consistently to get over my nervousness, right? So I've had to do a presentation in front of 250 people. Some of you have seen that presentation. Um, I had to do a presentation in front of 15 very successful business owners here on the Gold Coast. Before that, I was petrified. I was sweating bullets, right? But I use this magic question to get over my nerves, right? And um, the magic question is the following. What is the biggest challenge or consequence that this audience will face if they don't hear and act on the information I'm about to share with them. I'll say it again, and you definitely want to be writing this down. What is the biggest challenge or consequence that this audience that I'm about to speak to will face if they don't hear and act on the information I'm about to share with them? And when I was sweating bullets and I was sitting in my car in Burley, and I was wondering, can I do this? Can I really get up and do this? I don't know, can I do it? I literally asked myself that question. I sat there and I wrote down all the problems, all the challenges, all the consequences that an audience will face. And I'm like, wow, they're not gonna achieve their goals. Wow, their relationships are gonna break down. Wow, they're gonna have more stress. Wow, um, businesses are not gonna achieve their goals. Wow, and I wrote down all these things. And eventually I got to a point where I realized had nothing to do with me. It had nothing to do with what they thought of me. It had everything to do with how effectively could I go and help them? Because if I didn't help them, there were gonna be issues and challenges. And when I came to that realization in that moment, yeah, the nerves didn't worry me anymore. And what we need to appreciate is that nerves is just a sign that we're focused on ourselves. But when we're focused on other people, as Marianne Williamson said, when we're focused on others and focused on service, we can never be nervous, okay? So hopefully you got something from this video. Um, at the end of the day, nervousness happens because we have the addiction to wanting to get it perfect. And when we know that when we show up as our authentic self and know that the more real we are, the more we're actually gonna do a better job, the more we can just not worry about nerves. We definitely want to foster a respect for our audience and a respect for the context, but don't ever let nerves be something that holds you back from stepping up and being as powerful as you can be as a trainer, as an assessor, as a public speaker. Hope it's been helpful. See you in the next one.